Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm um, doing great. Um, can you let um, the listener know who you are and your position? Uh, my name is Jean Fibin Sengimana. I'm okay. uh, the Minister in Charge of Youth and uh, Information and, Tele and Communication Technology in the okay. Republic of Rwanda. Okay. So, um, how has um, Rwanda been able to transform its once previous backwardness into an ICT hub? Well, uh, I think it, it, it is important to put everything in perspective. When okay. we say backwardness, I think uh, you refer basically to the situation in which the country was uh, in '94 okay. after the genocide against Tutsi, mm -hmm. where it was uh, almost a failed state. Mm -hmm. You know, no institution, uh, GDP had had declined to uh, something like hundred dollars per, per person. Mm -hmm. uh, life expectancy below 40 mm. um, and you know a big part of the population had just been killed and mm. another one another big part uh, went to exile you mm -hmm. know it was it was um, there was no country basically mm. uh, but then uh, if you take a snapshot at that time of the country and then you take another snapshot somewhere in the middle of, uh, of the last uh, decade mm -hmm. where the country almost came back uh, recovered, um, I mean, economically to get to the pre-genocide levels economically mm -hmm. to really a uh, takeoff that uh, took place ever since, mm -hmm. and uh, and the country completely transformed, mm -hmm. country that is secure, that is mm -hmm. welcoming uh, mm -hmm. for for business people, mm -hmm. a country that is performing on most of the th things that um, have been uh, challenging uh, for a number of African countries. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of for us, doing business, in terms of pro providing security, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, uh, providing ac access to basic uh, necessities. facilities, necessities, including telecom, mm -hmm. uh, because for us we consider IT as a basic necessity mm -hmm. uh, to the population, um, including fighting corruption, mm -hmm. uh, living in a clean and uh, and uh, um, safe environment mm -hmm. all uh, some of the descriptions uh, that uh, match Rwanda today mm -hmm. and uh, but most importantly i think a country that has healed from mm -hmm. its wounds uh, from genocide people united mm -hmm. and looking forward for a bright future mm -hmm. so in that sort of story mm -hmm. that that's where mine is really to focus on the ICT part mm -hmm. and and uh, the question that you asked was how would the country have transformed mm -hmm. from that situation mm -hmm. to becoming uh, an ICT hub in this region? Mm -hmm. So I would say that it is a story of, uh, of uh, first of all, of, of vision. Mm -hmm. uh, that during that time where everything had to be built, mm -hmm. we were blessed with a leadership that was able to see what the world would be like in 20 years from that time mm -hmm. and beyond. That economies were going to dramatically become knowledge economies from being resource-based economies. Mm -hmm. You know, ours was based on agriculture. Mm -hmm. And start investing in building the foundation for that economy. Mm -hmm. And I would say that is another story of courage. Mm -hmm. Because when you have every dollar available to be invested, mm -hmm. being competed for, by the education system, mm -hmm. by the healthcare system, mm -hmm. by the infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, just basic roads and, and the water and mm -hmm. electricity, mm -hmm. by um, other things, security, mm -hmm. safety, mm -hmm. uh, protection of the vulnerable people, mm -hmm. of the survivors, mm -hmm. uh, of the orphans, and you still put that one dollar into digging and putting fiber mm -hmm. in the ground. Mm -hmm. I would say that is a story also of courage. Mm. But it's also a story of um, people believing mm -hmm. in that vision. Not mm -hmm. only the visionary, but also people embracing and buying into the vision. Not only Rwandans, mm -hmm. but also our partners, our friends of Rwanda, mm -hmm. investors mm -hmm. who've uh, trusted mm -hmm. that vision and uh, invested their own money mm -hmm. in this economy which is largely paying off. Uh, everyone has been fortunate to really get their return on investment in this economy.
Mm. And uh, we, are, we, are, we keep attracting uh, such mm. good investment, high quality investments, mm. not only targeting this market, but also the entire South Africa region and beyond. So, just to summarize, I would mm -hmm. say I would say it's a story of vision, a story mm -hmm. of leadership, mm -hmm. it's a story of courage, mm -hmm. and it's a story of a shared, uh, a shared purpose. Hmm. Quite um, extensive. So, how challenging was this transformation, especially in the ICT? I would say that the challenges I said um, have been on multiple fronts. Hmm. The first challenge, of course, was to uh, make everyone buy into the vision, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, because the entire legal and the regulatory environment needed to align to that vision. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to liberalize the sector very quickly ahead of many other countries. Mm -hmm. We need to start calling in investment ahead mm -hmm. of many other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, to be able to bring everyone on board, I would say it was the first challenge. The, the, the moment that was uh, not uh, no longer a problem, mm -hmm. um, the moment we had institutions, uh, we had the, 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 the right environment to operate mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. then the next challenge we realized that we are coming from below zero mm -hmm. in terms of all the parameters you need to build the knowledge economy. Mm -hmm. You need infrastructure, you need human skills, mm -hmm. you need institutional capacity, mm -hmm. you need uh, services mm -hmm. to start flowing into uh, people's hands so mm -hmm. that they can believe mm -hmm. what you say. Mm -hmm. so on all those fronts, we were coming from below zero. Mm -hmm. So it really required a lot of investments uh, consistently mm -hmm. uh, before you start reaping the fruits. That's why I said it is a story of courage. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the challenge has been resources and to that extent. Mm -hmm. It's a country that doesn't have any natural resources. Mm -hmm. Every dollar has been either very hard earned by the taxpayer or coming from donors, but increasingly, increasingly coming from investors. Mm. So uh, resources uh, have been, uh, I mean, th that's what resources are about. They always have to be scarce. Mm. Um, so those would be basically the, the challenge coming from a very low base, mm -hmm. uh, being able to convince and bring everyone on board, not mm. only the Rwandan community, but mm -hmm. also the international community, mm -hmm. including the investment community, and uh, you know, making the very difficult decisions in terms of uh, prioritizing a sector mm -hmm. for investment uh, amidst uh, a very tough competition for mm -hmm. other basic necessities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's the reception of young people? Because during my stay, I've noticed that um, Rwanda is basically a country of young people. What has been the reception of youths to the ICT advancement of the country? Well, you know, for young people, it's like, you know, it's... Uh, it's I would say it's a dream come true. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a demand driven change. It's something that they demand for. Mm they need um, whereas changing how business is done using IT mm -hmm. might meet a lot of resistance with mm -hmm. the older generations mm -hmm. for the young people it's just natural mm -hmm. so it's been really a very warm reception for by, by the young people mm -hmm. they can't get enough of it mm -hmm. uh, today we are talking about levels of penetration of about 75% on, mm -hmm. for, for mobile phones uh, we are approaching 30% for internet penetration. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about uh, probably 50% on financial services mm -hmm. penetration use, using mobile mobile technology. Those are not yet good uh, measures. Mm -hmm. we, we still want to increase, and the demand is there. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that there is still a gap between urban areas and the rural areas. Mm -hmm. And those young people from the rural areas are really demanding for more. Demanding. Yeah, hearing what others have been mm -hmm. able to benefit, they can they can see and feel. Mm -hmm. uh, they can you know how 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 that divide mm -hmm. you know is painful mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, the reception has been warm, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say that the young people have taken really advantage mm -hmm. of this in terms of uh, figuring out 
how they could not only consume or utilize the service, mm-hmm. but also be at the production side of the equation mm-hmm. and start making money and creating jobs. Mm-hmm. That is also happening and it's part of the story. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was again a visionary move uh, on the part of our president mm-hmm. to decide to combine the youth and ICT portfolios because mm-hmm. they so well go together. And uh, mm-hmm. when you think about it, mm-hmm. um, there cannot be any limit to what can be done in that space where the youth and ICT intersect. Mm. And if you can grow that space more and more through innovation, through job creation, mm. creativity, uh, and really transforming how the economy operates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, um, two more questions to go. The ICT policies all over the world are always capital inten- intensive. How has your ministry executed some of these projects, like the fiber optic um, um, initiative that happened um, some years ago? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the, the investment in the ICT sector has always been um, a, a, a government-led okay. Go uh, initiatives. Because for some reason, uh, when the mobile uh, technology became widespread, uh, you know, beginning of 2000, Mm-hmm. You know, economists are saying that Africa is not a market. You mm-hmm. know, people living on less than one dollar, the continent where uh, majority lives mm-hmm. under the poverty line, mm-hmm. is not a market. But time has proven them wrong. So Rwanda case has been similar in a way because um, for every major investment, uh, government had to drum up support for the private sector to come and in many cases actually taking the lead and showing that in fact what they perceive as risk is a a marginal risk. Um, So uh, government was part of the setup of the first mobile Mm -hmm. telecom operator. Mm -hmm. Uh, Government uh, almost single-handedly invested in the first national uh, fiber backbone. Uh, both underground and on on on, uh, on power transmission, mm-hmm. uh, government took the lead and acquired capacity, international capacity to connect us to to the submarine cable uh, mm-hmm. to to get uh, faster access to internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the good thing is, whenever government will do one step forward, private sector will do two steps mm-hmm. and get ahead again. Okay. So. Uh, on the fiber, for instance, uh, government lead the first mile mm. and the private sector is doing the last mile. Mm. So the 4G LTE that we are talking about mm. today that has just been launched. Recently, two weeks ago. Uh, three, weeks three weeks ago. I, yeah, I that followed was, it on Twitter. Yes. Mm. That is the last mile. Okay. You know, for several years, our government has put the fiber in the ground, uh, connecting all the districts in the country. Mm. Uh, you know, really bearing more fiber than any other country in this continent in terms of density. Mm-hmm. But then that backbone could not be utilized without a last mile or access network. Okay. Uh, so the other choice was government to go and go ahead and keep putting money in building networks, which mm-hmm. is not our core business as government. Mm-hmm. But we were successful in attracting private sector interest. So we got investments to come and complete the rollout by putting a wireless last mile access network mm-hmm. uh, so that's why that's why i say government do, does one step and then private sector does two remaining mm-hmm. steps mm-hmm. government was part of the initiation of the first mobile telecom operator mm-hmm. which is completely uh, private now but then private sector four other companies came mm-hmm. with with a similar s- scale of investments mm-hmm. and we have now four large uh, telecom operators and many other ISPs that are retaining uh, the different services available. The mm. um, government used to own one national TV until mm. really recently, but today we have multiple channels, I don't know even how many now, mm. are licensed to do TV in the country. Mm. There was only one radio until, you know, probably uh, uh, one or two, a couple of radios uh, 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 in the 90s, but mm. I think the entire FM range has been exhausted. Mm. Uh, in terms of the FM stations. Mm-hmm. So government does one thing, second thing, but then the private sector does. And that's the direction we want to see. We want to see the private sector taking Take much more a proactive lead, leading role, mm-hmm. uh, having uh, 
uh, different, uh, you know, the same situation that many other African countries have, mm. uh, where you, you really feel that the economy is a uh, private sector mm. powered, mm. Uh, and uh, we, we keep building on that. Mm. Final question, sir. What's, what do you think is the future of ICT in Rwanda? And um, from your own honest perspective, do you think it has transformed ordinary lives? Ah, yeah, absolutely. The future of ICT in Rwanda, um, it is the future of Rwanda. Mm. So where do it's it's like asking me, what is the future of Rwanda? Mm. So this is a country on the move. It's a country that is uh, transforming. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that the transformation will take us to a knowledge-based economy. So ICT will be the ultimate infrastructure to power the economy of the future. Mm -hmm. And it is already proving to, 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 to be that because uh, we, we, are, we are, have set a target by 2020 to mm -hmm. have become a service-based economy uh, that is powered by ICT. So mm -hmm. That is happening because we have just five years to 2020. Mm -hmm. So we, we have signposts telling us that we are going in the right, di the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, so ICT is, is, is going to become like a, a utility. Mm -hmm. You know, people would be um, surrounded by it it will become part of life mm -hmm. to a point where you actually don't feel it anymore because it has be become part of, of life mm -hmm. uh, there are things you expect to work uh, wherever you go uh, when you get into a hotel you expect water and mm -hmm. you turn the tap you expect the water to flow mm -hmm. when you, s you switch on the light you expect the light to come up mm -hmm. when you press on the on button of the uh, remote control, you expect the TV to go on. And when you switch on your phone or your laptop, you expect it to be connected on internet and super fast broadband mm. without asking questions. And, and not, not just in hotels, everywhere you go. Mm. That's what I, I see ICT becoming. Mm. I think the industry needs to innovate and enable that situation. Now, people will ask these kind of questions like, who's going to pay for this? Mm. I mean, we pay for this. When I drink this cup of coffee, I'm paying for the connectivity that I have on my phone. Mm. But if ICT needs to be, to stop really, I mean, broadband mm -hmm. needs to stop uh, becoming like a privilege. Mm -hmm. It's a necessity. I mean, mm -hmm. to, to us, it's a right. Mm. So that's where we are going, and uh, uh, we, we are really determined to, to deliver on that uh, promise. Mm. Um, Minister, yes. thank you very much for granting me this interview. Thank you, Minister. Yeah.